Hello everyone, Bosch Gonda here, and today we are talking about the Ashley Wentz biography of one of a kind, Elon Musk. Okay, I want to preface this with the fact that I have been a huge Elon Musk fan. When the first time I heard about the guy, when you know, there is this very cool entrepreneur who became a worldwide super celebrity star once people started to compare him with Tony Stark. I'm not the hugest fan of Iron Man or all these movies based on the comic book. But here is the thing, he was definitely the coolest entrepreneur just because of the stuff he's been investing in and the stuff he's been working on. And you know, you always kind of feel for the idea that this is something where the future is going to be. Especially when you know, looking at the companies that he's been working on, which is Tesla and PayPal and SpaceX and Solar City and some other of them, you definitely started to feel for him and that this is the guy with some vision. And I know Elon is quite a controversial person. There has been different backlashes that's been happening him doing some stunts on Twitter or saying some not really appropriate things but then he's always compensating for all the crap that he may be saying like social media or just in the publicity way to put out his own vision or his own personality or maybe he deliberately doing all the stunts to create more PR and marketing for the, his companies and himself especially. Nevertheless, I think just the whole idea that the person really believing that this will become an interplanetary species, this I think what kind of what kind of got me on the hook when I first heard of him. So I've been having a copy of Ashley Wentz's biography about Elon Musk for quite a while on my laptop. Um, I think I a lot about five years ago, the first time, and I just never had a chance to start reading it besides the introduction. So a year ago friend of mine presented me with an actual physical copy of the book so I didn't have any more excuses of oh you know I actually don't really like reading electronic versions that is why I just took a book opened it and decided to learn more about our beloved entrepreneur all right I I wasn't fully sold on the first few chapters when they were interviews with his family, where they, they were talking about his childhood and the way he's been growing up with this unusual weirdo with his own vision, living in his own world and all the kind of things. He was not the same from the very beginning. I mean, indeed true, but I felt like it was a bit too pompous and first few chapters when they were talking about him living in Africa, him going to Canada, um, partially talking about the Elon's world, which is pretty much a quick summary of what um, what he's been up to right now it didn't really get me hooked on and I think when I came to the first chapter when they were talking about his very first startup which was the Zip2 company I also wasn't really feeling too enthusiastic about it because I haven't heard about that company before and of course now reading the book and learning about it it just didn't get me excited at all so Actually, that prevented me from reading the book in one go. I actually stopped at the chapter 4 when they were talking about Zip2 and the way he's been basically earning his first money. And uh, he then successfully sold the startup. And that's where we started to come into the more interesting stories when it's coming to the PayPal. And um, for those who don't really know what the PayPal story is basically PayPal was um, invented by Peter Thiel and the other guy, I don't really remember the name. While similar idea was in development of the startup of Elon Musk, which was X.com. So X.com was also like Elon went to the internship in a banking and he realized that like banks are super rigid and they not really taking any risks, even though it could be that the money is literally lying on the table, banks wouldn't even go for them. There was basically some story about the Brazilian bonds, uh, that uh, it would be such an easy money grab, but the banks didn't want to take the risk, even though Elon estimated there was barely any. 
And of course, banking system was really hard to reform it. So basically, he started his new venture called X.com, which was supposed to revolutionize the internet um, banking, basically create internet banking, so to say. And then there was another company, PayPal, which was sort of actually this small startup started these two enthusiasts where they also sort of created this digital payment system. So all in all, Axis.com has been having money, PayPal didn't have any money, the guys were developing all together. At a certain point of the time, it actually merged, sort of, like Axis.com sort of bought off them because at the end of the day, they were trying to do the similar things. And uh, that's how the PayPal appeared, even though Elon, by investing also more of a capital and kind of being a bigger shareholder in PayPal, he was made to keep the name PayPal, even though he was still rooting for Axis.com. Due to the succession of him not taking the very right moves as a leader, as a CEO, he was dismissed and basically he lost control over PayPal when it was going public. Peter Thiel took over, became the new CEO of PayPal and then they, when they sold the company to eBay, that's when sort of the Elon story ended. I think it's actually became quite an Elon thing that for the companies when he was early investor or um, one would argue he was one of the founders of the company. Um, people were always trying to leave him out. So same happened in PayPal, same happened with Tesla Motors, actually the company that two enthusiasts, car enthusiasts, um, started as Tesla Motors and they basically went to Elon to ask for funding, who also got really hooked up and um, said, okay, I'm investing into the company. So basically that is how the whole brand appeared. And uh, I do believe that he had some rights to be called as a founder because otherwise without his own money, there would be no company. However, this is a different story. So in all the subsequent chapters, you would be hearing a lot of different stories about his companies, primarily about the SpaceX and about the Tesla motors. I was quite surprised that the first idea of SpaceX actually appeared at the beginning of 2000s when Elon just got out of PayPal, he was looking into the different things and he actually was super interested in space. So he was attending this one of the weird conventions where quite a small amount of people were discussing what could be the way for us to send a mice into space. And this is literally what that group of people and the board that was leading this space society they were planning to do. So after hearing all of this and how little were the dreams of this group of people, Elon actually thought like, okay, so what could be a way to revolutionize this? And what could be the way, how can we send a person to Mars and not just mice? And that basically became the idea from which he started SpaceX. And there is a lot of different stories. They also, the author also talks a lot about all the people who started the company, who were the very first engineers, the very first board members who came on board and helped to develop these two beautiful companies that we all now know about and uh, happy about all the progress they're making. There has been, of course, a lot of drama, even though SpaceX was literally the baby of Elon, it was just his own company that he started, Tesla Motors, he was kind of sharing with two other guys, and one of them who was I mean, at least from the perspective that I learned from author, he was really um, fame thirsty and kind of arrogant. So he actually wanted to root that it was all due to him, that the company actually started and appeared and all the success was also due to him. So that's kind of what was the conflict that they were having with Elon. And at the end of the day, uh, the guy left the company just because their visions weren't really working out and Elon's was always rooting for cost efficiency. So in SpaceX, he managed to cut down the cost like 10 times less for the electric cars. They, of course, were having a huge development cost at first, but then they were still trying, like his primary goal was to cut down the cost as fast as possible. And of course, the, tr the prices that they needed to sell the very first batches of the cars were preposterous. Even though there were a lot of um, there were a lot of rich people who were wanted to have this environmental friendly look towards them, so they were trying to acquire the very first versions of the Tesla just 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 for the cloud, you know, just 
That's exactly. I mean, what else would you expect from the rich person? So, like Leo DiCaprio, he also really wanted to go for for a Tesla because it's a super environment friendly and all the other things. So what was funny, you still at the same time, besides just looking into all the success of the companies, you're also learning to more about like all the conflicts that has been happening, as I already mentioned. And um, I think there was almost um, almost fatal situations where Elon was running out of cash and he basically needed to choose between SpaceX and Tesla where to invest his money. Otherwise, either one of the companies would die or if he would try to split, most likely both companies would die. But luckily, SpaceX finally got their first NASA contract, which helped to sustain the cost and still keep the, all the jobs open. So he actually managed to um, put the money into Tesla and also make it successful. And, you know, after all these years, there has been this pretty known Tesla phenomenon that like people were so much believing in Elon, so much believing in his ideas and in him as a presenter of these ideas, that people were willing to invest the money into the company, even though if you would be looking at the numbers, the stocks of Tesla are super overvaluated. And this hyperinflation of the stocks was purely based on believing in him, in his project, and him as a person. That I think this is exactly the thing I believe is so amazing about this guy. There has been no other entrepreneur that comes to mind that had such a huge personal brand that helped him to develop his own companies to the point where people just trust a lot in the ideas and what the person has to say. I mean, I'm mainly talking about the people who necessarily has always been business people. Of course, once you're building one successful business, you're becoming super popular and there is more trust among the investors towards you but I think what Elon managed to pull off is great. The book also of course touches upon his relationship with the family, with his first wife, with his second wife, um, him kind of living the life of a celebrity sometimes even though he's super workaholic and can't just leave at work and trying to understand what's happening and see sometimes could step into the role and do some stress management in terms of to bring the company back to life and he actually needed to do that several times for both Tesla and SpaceX. And then I think something that I truly respect, despite I understand that some people kind of getting tired from hearing about Elon Musk, I do still, after reading this book, again have this feeling even though my skepticism has been growing sometimes about Elon and his ideas and his companies and the businesses but I did realize why back in 2012 when I first heard of the guy I really fell for him and he became the people I was sort of looking up to just based on how cool he was and the things he has been doing. There has been also quite some funny stories that um, Ashley Wentz already put into the appendices of the book. So one of them was that basically the Zip2, the first startup that um, Musk started, there was a guy with whom allegedly, according to him, um, Elon stole the idea of Zip2. Even though the ideas that the guy has making the claim was kind of similar, he still never managed to do a startup like this, or at least bring it to any significant level. But once hearing of the success of Zip2, the guy has been trying to sue Elon and um, he didn't succeed. What What is here to say? All the judges were ruling against him and uh, that guy kind of went all full crazy mode and he became obsessed with suing people who he may be believing were stealing his ideas. Which is um, both sad and funny thing. You should all read the story about John O'Reilly, the guy who was filing a lawsuit against Elon Musk and 
not just how it all unwilled, it's quite interesting. There is also quite a long piece in appendices about Elon and his uh, story with PayPal and how the coup started and how he got kicked out of the company pretty much. Which also he has quite a lot to say and what were the disagreements between him and uh, the board members uh, like Peter Thiel and some others. That is why I think it's also kind of curious that he was more rooting for a different technology to be implemented into PayPal rather than trying to build on the one that was already kind of getting older and older. So that's also quite an interesting thing. Again, I mean, it's his own perspective, whether it was true or not, it's up to you to believe. And I think the third and funny Appendix 3 was about um, some emails that Elon Musk has been sending to all his employees, which is like a company-wide memos. And there were a few things, like one of them was about company going public, which um, pretty much was something that he was foreseen in the future and he has been given shares for people as a premium for their great work, as a bonus for their great work. However, people were looking for getting more cash and they were still trying to root to like when it will be the time when the SpaceX will become public and basically Elon um, was a bit of upset with people looking at this in such a way, even though of course I think it, it, it's kind of understandable that there are some people who, for whom monetary value is more important and maybe that even though I would assume that the salaries in SpaceX are quite competitive, the um, cost of life is kind of getting higher every year. So I could also partially understand the people, uh, or could also partially understand the upset that uh, Elon Musk was feeling. But I think the most hilarious email he has been sending was uh, called S, which stands for Acronyms Seriously Suck. And basically, it was a widespread story among the SpaceX and the Teslas that has been that has been using acronyms for all the different kind of things when they even not necessary. So, like of course, there are some acronyms that are widespread and everybody usually knows. However, people tend to grow into using some acronyms that just made no sense for any outsider or any new people who would be stepping into the company. This is why Elon ranted in the email about how how people need to get rid of this, and that was a story of how the ass rule became a thing in his companies. Well, at the end of the day, this biography became quite an enjoyable read. Especially for the parts when you already have some context towards what has been happening and uh, I think his childhood time and something pre-time where we already don't really even know or heard about the companies he's been working in or this video game that he made when he was a kid. This is an amazing achievement, and of course, but what I really liked were the parts when we were already talking about the well-known companies that are now disrupting the economies and industries of all over the world, which I think this is exactly something that we should give some credit to Elon Musk and admire him as a great entrepreneur. So let's see what's gonna happen. This is my take on Ashley Wentz's book about Elon Musk. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you will enjoy this read. Bye.